Hey guys, and welcome to Learning Math. Today I'll be going over the 22nd Olympiad, so let's get into it. The first problem says, suppose two days ago was Sunday. What day of the week will 365 days from today then be? So as Kristen says, two days ago, two days ago was Sunday. We're supposed to find 365 days from today. So how many days of the week there are they? There. So how many days? Like there are seven days. So what we're gonna do is divide 365 and seven to find how many times this repeats. But we don't have, we don't care about how many times it repeats. We repeat the. Uh, we have to care about the remainder. Divided by seven. Get 52 and a remainder of one. Now we have the remainder of one. That means it's gonna be one more day in front of us, which is here. Okay, now since this is Sunday and we're going this way, then what's after Sunday? Monday. Then Tuesday. Then Wednesday. So Wednesday should be our answer. A second problem says, what should the starting number be in the above diagram? So first, let's just draw the diagram. Okay, so we start here, we multiply the number by four and then add it by eight and then divide it by three and then we get our result as 28. So what we have to do in here is work backwards. How? Well, since it's divided by three here, we're gonna multiply it to three to find what this is equal to when we solve this. We have to keep working backwards. So 28, since it's divided by three, what's the opposite of divide? Multiply, so we're gonna do multiply by three. So we're going this way now, multiply by three. When we multiply by 3, we get 84. You can even check this. 84 divided by 3 is equal to 28. And the 84 is going to be right over here. Not there, because right here is 28 when we get. Okay, now it's 84, and we added 8. So now we have to subtract 8, because we're working backwards. When we subtract it, we get 76. Now we multiply by four, so you have to go back and we get divide by four. When we divide by four, we get 19. So we started with 19, which means 19 should be our answer. The third poem says, a rectangular tile is two inches by three inches. What is the least number of tiles that are needed to com completely cover a square region, two feet on each side? So as Vision says, the side length of the square is two feet and two feet because it's a square, and we have to fit as many as as many rectangular inches cards that we can fit, and the side lengths are two inches and three inches. Okay, so I just laid it down like this. Okay, since this is two inch and this is two feet, how many feet? How many inches are in a foot? There's twelve. Okay. Now it's two and two, so they cancel out because two divided by two is equal to one. So basically, now how much feet? Foot and inch. How many inches fit in a foot? 12. So they can be 12 cards right over here. Like that, there can be 12 cards. Now how about the side? It's three inches, it's two feet. Two feet becomes 24 inches because when you multiply, and when you divide 24 and three, we get eight. So eight can fit on this side. And to find the area, we just have to multiply how many of these and by these. So 12 multiplied by eight. So let's just multiply this quickly. And we get our answer is 96. The fourth problem says, six arrows land on the target as shown at the right. Each arrow is in one of the regions of the target. Which of the following total scores is possible? 16, 19, 26, 31, 41, or 44. So first, let's just draw the dart board. Okay, so we know that if there's six darts, and they hit, if they even hit the three mark, all hit three, then it would be 18. So 18, so 16 gets eliminated. So we can just raise the 16. Okay, now what's the greatest? If all were at 7, then it would be 42. So 44 is also eliminated. 
Okay, now we're left with only five, four. Okay, so knowing that 16 can be made by five, five, and three, and three, these are only four, not six. Okay, we also can add to this. Like pretend we add three and three or five and five. Let's say five and five. When we add that, it'll be five, 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 five three, three. Or what we can do is subtract 19 and 16. How much is that equal to three? How can we obtain three? We cannot. And we cannot obtain three in two moves. It was one, yes we could. Okay, now 26 and 16. 10, how can we obtain that? We can do five and five and it works. So five, 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 three, three. So 26 works. And the question says there's only one answer for this. So 26 should be our answer. The fifth problem says, a number n divides each of 17 and 30 with the same remainder in each case. What is the largest value n can have? So as we know that 17 and 30, there's a factor called n. And with the remainder of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and all, any. And we have to find the n. The value of n, the greatest value. Okay, so if the remainder was 1, then it would be 16 and 29. The remainder was 2, would be 15 and 28. We have to check which one when we divide, like let's say these two, then it has to be equal to 2 with 0 remainder, or 3 or 4. But 2 is the least, so it has to be equal to 2. So let's check. 29, 16, nope. 28, 15, nope. 27, 14, nope. 26 and 13, yes. So 26 and 13 works. Now, why can't n be 26? Because 26 is greater than the starting value of 17. So let's check if 13 works. Okay, if it was 13 and it had a remainder of 4, then what's 13 plus 4? 17, which matches with this. Okay, now 13 multiplied by 2 plus 4. 13 multiplied by 2 is 26 plus 4 is 30. So we have both values, and this is the greatest value, which is 13. So 13 should be our answer. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys want to watch more math videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And see you next time.